The name of the Polish composer, Juliusz Zaremski, probably doesn't mean very much to you. It didn't mean very much to me. Uh, but I think once you've heard the piece we're going to hear now, you will change your opinion. So why is it that Zaremski is not well known? Well, this might explain it a bit. His first career was as a virtuoso pianist. He was born in 1854 in uh, what is now Western Ukraine. He studied piano in Vienna and then in St. Petersburg, where he finished the course in record time. Um, and he was obviously extraordinarily talented. Um, and here is the problem. Zaremski came to composition really quite late in life. You know, unlike Chopin, who began composing early, Zaremski left it until he was mature. He already had established himself as a concert pianist. And unlike other composers of the pre-recorded era, uh, he didn't write anything that was easy enough or amenable enough to get into those piano anthologies that people had in their homes. So his name didn't remain in the public consciousness, it, you know, in the way that Paderewski's did and even Chopin with his easier preludes and piano pieces got into the public consciousness. Um, unfortunately for him, uh, Zaremski died very young at the age of 31. So what about Zaremski the pianist? Well, the Industrial Revolution and the mass production of steel caused an explosion in er experimentation in musical instruments in the middle and late 19th century. Pianos were developing at an incredibly fast rate. And what put Zaremski, the pianist, on the map was the concert he gave at the Great Exhibition of Paris in 1878, where he uh, presented a piano that had a, a double keyboard uh, with uh, the bass of one hand uh, at one end and the bass of the other hand at the other end. And it was working in contrary motion. It was the most extraordinarily difficult instrument to play. And I think it took him about two months to master. But after his recital, uh, the Paris press went completely mad. Chopin, au revoir, viva Zaremski were, were the headlines. Um, the piano was not a great success. There were concerts in Vienna and, and, and Warsaw and London, but uh, after that it died a death. But Zaremski's career continued to flourish until he contracted tuberculosis. Earlier in 1874, Zaremski had gone to Rome to study with the great maestro Franz Liszt. Uh, Liszt became hugely influential in Zaremski's life. And while some, some commentators claim that uh, uh, Zaremski was Liszt's favorite student, we really can't be certain about this. What we can be sure of uh, is this admiration for uh, Zaremski as a composer, which I will show you in a moment when I read you an extract from a letter. Um, but in 1870, 1882, uh, Zaremski took a job at the Brussels Conservatoire. He was no longer able to manage a concert career. His tuberculosis had become too, too severe. But teaching was something he could still do. And uh, Liszt wrote him this letter, which I'll read you an extract of, uh, on his appointment. He writes the following. He says, Dear friend, you have made an excellent choice. The Brussels Conservatoire keeps in the first ranks. You will have to see that your piano class does honor to the Conservatoire, to its head, and to your own name. This will take some years to do. Therefore, persevere. Good advice for any teacher. But he goes on to comment on some of the compositions that Zaremski had sent him. Your three studies are most uncommon, remarkable and successful. The second in F minor might be signed Chopin. This exceedingly high praise does not imply that you have in any way been guilty of plagiarism. For in your works, original power is manifest. High praise indeed. The Piano Quintet in G minor, which we're going to hear now, was Zaremski's last composition. It was not performed until 43 years after his death. Now, I can't explain why it was ignored for so long, and uh, 
I must say I think it reflects very badly on musicologists and musicians that it was ignored for such a long time. Is this a Polish quintet? Well, not really. Zaremski was a man of his time. He spent a lot of time living abroad and the Polish influences are not very strong. When you first listen to it, you might think of Brahms's piano quintet. You hear Faure, you hear Dvorak, you hear César Franck, you even do hear some Chopin. But these impressions are really fleeting. What you're hearing is a mature composer, a composer who has his own identity, who has matured his, his craft. And for me, this is just wonderfully original, gripping, vital, vigorous, intense music of, of great beauty. The ideas just keep coming and repeating. I hope you'll listen to this music over and over again and derive the same surprise, excitement and pleasure that I have myself.